Egypt, the land of the pyramids, land of mystery. In this film, we shall dig deep in order to understand more about Egypt, its place in the world, and how it was ruled. Ancient Egypt was ruled by a pharaoh whom it held absolute power as to not anger the gods. Below him were his most trusted advisers. After that came priests and nobles. Fourth came officials and scribes, fifth craftsmen, and last, laborers, slaves, and peasants. You often inherit your parents' role, but there often was the ability to advance your social position. In Egypt, the majority of people lived in the working class, along with most military. Priesthood was reserved for the highest level of value, such as the nobility. Egypt's social class had wildly different experiences. The upper class would have feasted on delicacies, while lower working class people would have to try to survive. Evidence of this can be found in the large number of simple graves of the poor, and the few large, extravagant graves of the rich. Advancing your social position could be done by being in the military, or in the priesthood. Jobs were usually acceptable. You would get paid and get a lunch break. You would have to work a certain amount of time for the pharaoh by the end of your life. In ancient Egypt, trade of valuable items was a central part of domestic trade. It would have been difficult, though, to have become wealthy enough to trade them, which kept rich and poor apart. Many jobs in ancient Egypt would have been similar to the ones we know today. The familiar faces of farmers, soldiers, midwives, butchers, carpenters, and so on could all be seen. Other jobs were linked to ancient Egypt's particular traditions such as the embalmers who made mummies, and the temple priests, for example, or were connected to the government or king, like the vizier, the palace dancers, and the, royal, and the pharaoh's royal fan waver. Egypt was a major country, but it was not alone in the world. It had political relations with major trading countries, such as Phoenicia and Nubia. They provided Egypt with wealth and whatever Egyptians didn't already have. The Egyptians were wealthy, but they lacked some items. Wealth plus necessity always equals trade, and the Egyptians were no exception. The Egyptians used barter to trade, so they created an equivalent system of prices. For example, a golden ring might buy four incense trees, an item temples required and that grew, not in Egypt, but in Punt. Nubians were a small trading country that lived to the south of Egypt. They had less access to the Nile than Egyptians, because cataracts or rapids made sailing too deadly to attempt. So they traded by land, and they were very good at it, and soon became famous for it. Egyptians cared little for travel, but upper class would go out to trade, if they had to, and certain Egyptians did go out on expeditions. One reason Egyptians stayed home was because Egyptians believed that they were the best and that all others were inferior. Another reason for this lack of movement is that Egyptians believed if they died on a trip, they would not get a proper barrier, burial. Egypt will continue to prosper until 1070 BCE, when Assyria dominates the country. The golden age of Egypt is over.